Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we're looking at a system, this is a thermodynamics closed system problem, in which we have R134A inside a piston cylinder device, which means that this guy can move freely, and we're going from a higher state of energy to a higher temperature to a lower temperature. So we expect the atmosphere to be able to push this guy down as this energy is removed from our a refrigerant and also expect a change in internal energy. Problem statement reads, a piston cylinder device contains 5 kilograms of refrigerant 134A at 800 kilopascals and 70 degrees Celsius. Refrigerant is now cooled at constant pressure until it exists as a liquid at 15 degrees Celsius. Determine the amount of heat loss and show the process on a TV diagram with respect to saturation lines. So let me go ahead and do our double, our two states here. All right, we have 134A inside these guys. We're not losing any mass. This, you know, this fluid is not leaving the piston cylinder device. We have, um, we're given the mass. So when it says determine the amount of heat loss, it's already implying, you know, find me kilojoules, not kilojoules per kilogram, all right? Um, it's a constant pressure process. So know the following, right? Know that for state one, let's put here state one, state one, and this is state two, and we're doing this. Okay, so note that for state one, we have everything we need, right? We have both the pressure and the temperature, two thermodynamic properties that completely define my state one. And then for my state two, we also know two things, right? We know the temperature is 15 and we know it's a constant pressure process. So therefore we know the pressure is 800, right? So right out of the, out the gate, you already know this is 800 kilopascals and this temperature is 70 degrees Celsius. And over here, we know this is also 800 kilopascals because it's a constant pressure process. And this is 15 degrees Celsius, okay? Now, whenever you see constant pressure process, you can put a star, you can highlight like I'm doing or doing something because most likely, right? Most likely when you ask for heat, your heat's gonna be equal to the enthalpy. So you can go straight into that. There are exceptions, but we'll talk about that in a second, all right? So when you have constant pressure process, just, you know, uh, turn on an alert inside you because you're probably gonna do something related to enthalpy. We need to determine the amount of heat, all right? So this is the idea, right? So because we're going from a higher state of energy to a lower state of energy, we expect some heat to be leaving the system, right? So we expect some heat to be leaving this system and therefore we are to determine what is the amount of heat that's leaving the system. Um, note also that they talk about us having a liquid. So it is going from a state that we don't know whether it's superheated or a mixture all the way into a liquid. Now, that doesn't tell us much, right? Because it can be a saturated liquid and it can be perhaps, you know, mostly liquid with some vapor. That's probably not the case, but uh, it can be. And it can also be a compressed liquid. We don't know as of yet, but we can find out because we know these two guys here, that's all we need, right? If we analyze this from a first law perspective, remember that if we look at, you know, as per our last video in which we talk about the first law, this is internal energy, our first state, it has a higher energy. How do I know that? Because that's at 70 Celsius and we're going dropping down to 15. So because of that, I can infer that we are going from a higher state of energy to a lower state of energy, okay? What else can I infer? I can infer that the um, volume is gonna be changing, it's gonna be decreasing, right? Because the idea is as, um, let me go ahead and push this piston down a bit. Push this guy down a bit, like so. And I can go ahead and delete this and just put it down a bit too, just to decrease our volume there. What's the idea here? We have the atmosphere pushing down on this guy at all times. So this guy is pushing back up, right? So they're in equilibrium there and everything is stable. But when once we start losing heat, we start losing some of that energy that's assisting in pushing that up, right? So when, once that happens, well, guess what? On the tug of war, this guy wins and then therefore it pushes down a bit, right? So that's kind of the idea of what's going on here. It pushes down a bit. So what we uh, expect to be happening here is we have some work going into our system. Now, note the following. If we're losing energy as we, in terms of internal energy, and we're also gaining some work, well, you know what? We need heat to account for that, right? Because we can't create or destroy energy. So heat needs to account for both the work that's being done to my system and to the difference in 
internal energy that we expect. All right, that's the whole idea of the first law. So we can write this as delta U equals Q and work. And just like looking at this, you can see that this becomes automatically, it's like, oh, okay, so work's being done to my system. So therefore, okay, so my Q is gonna be my internal energy plus my work, right? Beautiful. All right, now what's next? We can note that uh, we can do the whole dance of, you know, finding what is the work by using the pressure, which is a constant pressure process. We can do, oh, okay, my work is too difficult. My work is going to be the integral as we go from P, difference in volume from volume one all the way to volume two. We can do that because we can find a specific volume for state one, for state two, calculate this, all good, beautiful, no worries there. All right. However, we can also note that, um, as in previous videos was shown, the uh, enthalpy, right, is defined as three lines defined as the internal energy plus delta PV, right? And then know that this is delta P, but, but the pressure is constant, so it comes out of the delta, if it comes out in the best word, but, you know, we don't have to account for the variation in pressure because there isn't one, and just this becomes, this just becomes a difference in volume. And if you note, this work here is this guy here, the pressure is constant, so therefore this integral is just P delta V, right? So guess what? The work is equal to this guy, so therefore this is in this in this case here in which we're dealing with this is equal to u plus work and what is u plus work well if we make the difference there what we can get, grab is the difference in enthalpy instead of trying to grab the work so indeed as I said in the beginning what we can do is we can just find the difference in enthalpy from state one to state two and that shall give us the heat that's being lost in the system. All right, in this transformation, should I say. Okay, so this is not always the case. What's the exception to this? Well, the exception is the work is not only the work of the, in this case here, the boundary work that we call, right? So it's not just the work of this piston moving back and forth. There might be some other work, electrical work, might maybe a uh, paddle wheel in here, you know, there's gonna be different types of work. So there, if that's the case, then we can't just say, you know, we go straight into this, because this is not going to be the only work. This is going to be one part of it. We need to account for the other ones. So it's not as straightforward as just doing this, right? We're going to have other components here of work that we need to account for. But if that's not the case, then, you know, constant pressure process, most likely you're going to end up with this. Your heat that you're trying to find out is just a difference in enthalpy, all right? And that makes our life easier, right? Because then what we need to do now is know that we know everything we need to know about this first state here. We have both, um, thermodynamic properties, likewise for the second state. So we just need to define them, you know, find the enthalpy in both, and we're good to go. We're happy, right? Let's do that. I'm gonna to go to my property tables, and I'm gonna look at 70 Celsius and see where my 800 falls, to see whether we have indeed a saturated mixture or not. Okay, so 70 Celsius, no, keep going. Okay, so let's look at the property tables, saturated, this is it, saturated refrigerant, and I'm looking at 70, degrees Celsius, I'm looking at, still loading, there you go, 70 degrees, all right, so check it out, at 70 degrees Celsius, my pressure should be 2100, we are at 800 kilopascals, so this is a superheated fluid, right, we are not dealing with a saturated liquid, right, another way to see it, we can do it, oops, sorry, another way to see it is we can go to the pressure table, and do exactly the same thing, the same deal, right? We can look at the pressure table, and we can look at 800, and we can know that 800, the saturation temperature is 31 degrees Celsius. We are at 70, so we are above the saturated temperature, so therefore, we are a superheated fluid, so no good. Using this table, what we need to do is superheated tables, right? And that's where we're going to grab the properties for the first state, right? So this first one here, here we go. So this first one here, we found out this is a superheated fluid. Beautiful. What about the second one? Let's have a look. We are at 800 uh, kilopascals. Oh, no, we just saw actually, right? We saw that 800, we had 30. Remember? We had 30. And then we are at 15. So the sat T sat, mm, where can I put the right here in the corner? So T sat at 800 kilopascals is about 30, right? About 31. 
And in the first one, we had 70, so therefore, superheated fluid, right? In the second one, we have 15, so we're below the saturation temperature. So what does that mean? If we're below the saturation temperature, that means we have a compressed fluid, right? So we're, we don't, we don't have a saturated um, flu, uh, liquid either or a saturated fluid mixture either. Okay, another way to see this, well, same thing, we can go in the same place. Uh, temperature table, and if we look at 15 degrees Celsius, um, we don't have 15, but we have 14, and for the sake of this, it is enough. And our PSAT is 473. Well, we are at 800, so we are above the saturation pressure, so therefore, we have a compressed fluid. What is the rule for compressed fluids? We've talked about this before in the channel, and if you don't remember, is as long as my pressure is below 2 megapascals, what I do is I approximate the properties to the properties at, of the saturated liquid. Not TSAT, sorry. Saturated liquid. Okay? And then that's exactly what we're going to do. We are at 800, so that's below 2 omega pascals, so therefore we can do um, saturated liquid temperatures. Okay, so this guy here is a compressed fluid. Compressed fluid. And we're going to do saturated liquid properties. Okay, and you can check. Uh, I'll leave a um, I'll leave a link here for a video in which we talk about that. Let me show why that's the case, and you can see that for yourself. All right, cool, beautiful. All right, so now we just need to grab our enthalpies. With the enthalpies, we can calculate our um, heat loss, and with that, we do our TV diagram, and we're good to go. All right, so superheated. I'm going to go down all the way to the superheated table. We're looking for 70 uh, Celsius and 800. Uh, kilopascals, if you recall, the, it's not loading, it's not loading, there you go, um, it's in megapascals, so what we want is 0.8, right, that's equivalent to 800, and we're looking at 70, so this is our guy here, and we're after the enthalpy, so it's going to be one of these values here, the enthalpy is this column here, so I'm going to go here, and this is my guy, 306.9, that's the enthalpy there, that's the value that I'm grabbing. All right, what about the uh, compressed fluid? No, I'm going to have to go to 15 on the saturation liquid temperature, 15. Uh, I don't have 15, I have 16 and 14, so I'm going to have to interpolate between these two values here, and I'm looking for the enthalpy. Enthalpy at the saturated liquid, right? So this is the column I'm interested in, and therefore what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, let's just highlight it to make it neat. Beautiful. So it's going to be somewhere between 70 and 73.72. All right. Well, we've did several times we did this uh, interpolations in the channel, so you can go ahead and watch the videos in which we explain all about what is a linear interpolation, how to do it. And I'm going to go ahead and just give you guys the answer here. So if we interpolate for 15 degrees Celsius, what we get is that our enthalpy is, what did I get? I got 72.33. Which makes a lot of sense because obviously it's between these two values. All right, so that's all we need. We can use that to be able to calculate our um, heat leaving. The only thing that we're missing is the mass. If you recall, right in the beginning, I talked about how they were uh, giving us the mass. Oh, actually, they gave us the mass in the beginning. Have they? Yeah, fine. Okay, cool, oh, beautiful. So we're not missing anything. All right, so what I'm going to do is okay because I'm going to do the difference in enthalpy. This is going to be my enthalpy on states two minus the enthalpy in state one. In this case, we're still using specific enthalpy, right? Because we have it, let's do it in lowercase, because we still have it in lowercase. And then I can multiply this by the mass if I'm interested in grabbing the, um, the end guy, right? So if I want, if this is the, for instance, I can do it reverse, doesn't matter. If this is um, the value of the, this is the second, right? If I want the uppercase one, all I'm gonna do is multiply 72.33 by five, five, that's kilograms. So I can remove the kilograms there, and this is going to give me 361, 361.65, and that's going to be in kilojoules. And I obviously can do the same thing for the other one, because the other one we got in um, 300 and something, 306.9. So our enthalpy, the change colors, our enthalpy, lowercase one, is 306.9, and we can multiply, if I want to find what is my uppercase one, we can multiply 306.9 times five, and this gives me 1,500-ish, uh, 34.5. All right, 
Okay, no, with these two guys here, I can go ahead and calculate, okay, what's my difference in uppercase enthalpy? Well, it's going to be 361, 61.65 minus 1534.5. And therefore, my enthalpy difference is, what did I find? 1100.85 kilojoules. All right, beautiful. Now, if you go ahead and say this is the answer, all right, you may have a nice professor and say, yeah, that's fine. But most likely it's going to give you like a half right. Why is that? Because you need to show this, right? You need to show this here. He's not asking you for the difference in enthalpy. It just happens to, in this case, it just happens so that the um, heat you're looking for is equal to, I forgot the negative, is equal to the difference in enthalpy, right? So therefore, my heat loss is 1172.85. 85. Okay. The negative here, you guys know this is indicating that the heat is being lost, not being gained. Now, there are two ways to show this on your final answer. You can say Q equals negative 1100, and that's one way to do it. Or you can say leaving my system, which is system, which just, just, which just indicates to whoever is marking you that you know what you're doing you know what you're talking about. And that is our answer. There are a couple of students of mine that like to say heat lost in the corner there, which is like the same thing. So you can you can drop this if you want to and just, okay. I'm indicating the heat loss, the amount is 1100, right? Whatever rocks your boat, they're all correct. Beautiful. Now, that's the amount of heat that's been lost. The other thing that we're uh, interested in is doing a TV or a PV, uh, TV diagram. Okay, beautiful. So that's easy for us to do now. We know everything we need to know. We know we have temperature here. We're going to have a specific volume over here. Let's go ahead and draw our saturation down. I'm going to do it more like so because we're going to have a compressed fluid. Okay. And I'm going to do a pressure line here because we're going to need one of these. This is going to be my 800 kilopascals pressure line. Where are we in the beginning? We have a superheated fluid, so therefore we're somewhere here in the beginning. And then we go down all the way, we always at 800, always at 800, still have some fluid, uh, some vapor, 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 only liquid. And from this point onwards, compressed liquid. And we're some, somewhere down here, right? So we can go ahead and say, um, maybe here's fine, doesn't really matter, right? So we can say, okay, this is my state number one. This is my state number two. That's what we're doing in this process. If you want to make it uh, fancier, what you can do is say, okay, this guy here is at uh, 70 degrees Celsius. This guy down here is at 15 degrees Celsius. And if you want to make it even fancier, you don't need to do this, but if you want to make it even fancier, you're going to go back to the property tables and you're going to write down what's the specific volume of state one and your specific volume of state two in kilograms per uh, meter, uh, other way around, in meters cubed per kilograms. Okay, the most important thing is to show that we're starting in the superheated zone, which is this zone here. We're crossing our saturation mixture and we're ending in the compressed uh, liquid zone or in the subcooled fluid zone, right? That's what we need to show. That's all for this problem. If you have any questions, as per usual, just leave them down below and I'll be sure to address them to the extent possible. And if this video helped you out, consider giving it a like and we'll talk soon. Thank you.